Hi, this is Keith Williams. Welcome to Five Wire World. We're interested in helping you get the most music from the least gear. How many amps do you need? This is the follow-up to the video I did on how many guitars do you need. Honestly, this line of questioning comes from 20 years of me collecting gear, only to step back and ask myself, why do I have all this stuff? How'd I get here? If you enjoyed this debate so far, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. And if you've already subscribed, drop by the store and grab a mug or a t-shirt to help support what we're doing here. Do I need to do the whole need versus want thing again? Probably. It's good to revisit. We have a habit of saying we need something, when what we really mean is we want something. When do we start doing that anyway? I have a theory that it started back at the beginning of mass media and advertising. Advertising is designed to make us feel like we're lacking something. Then they tell us how they can fix that feeling by selling us something. They're trying to create the impression of need because need is stronger than want. But of course, if we want to play an electric guitar, we need an amplifier. But there are different types of players and they have correspondingly different needs. I immediately thought of three categories of amp buyers, producers, gigging musicians, and guys that play at home with an occasional jam session thrown in. I think the amp companies want to convince us that we need a gear collection that rivals what recording studios have. I did this for years. <laughs> I drank the Kool-Aid and had pretty much one of everything in each category. But of course, none of it made me a better player, and it didn't create more opportunities to play with other people. And as I thought about it, those were the two reasons I started playing guitar in the first place. So let's come to grips with the fact that we aren't record producers, and we don't really need one more of everything to meet our goals. Oh, and I left out a category, rock stars. We're probably not rock stars either. But if you are a rock star and you're watching this, thanks for watching. So if we don't need one of everything, what do we need to get the job done with inspiration? To put that in perspective, let's look at the other two categories of players, gigging musicians and guys that play at home. What are the options there? Let's do gigging first. If you think about it, there's still two types of gigging musicians. Folks playing in one style of music, Americana, Roots, Blues, Rock, or God love you if you're trying to make a living at it, Jazz. The other type is playing in a cover band, where you need to be able to emulate the sounds of not just hundreds of tunes, but hundreds of guitar players from many different decades. Usually when we say cover band, the image of a six piece playing at a bar or at a wedding comes to mind. You have a book of tunes, usually a big book of tunes, you play in the hopes that it makes the crowd want to move their feet, or at least bob their heads. In a way, you have to be a producer in your own right to do this well. You need to know how to get a variety of tones you need for the variety of tunes you play. Everything from Stevie Wonder to Stevie Ray Vaughan, from Jimi Hendrix to Jimmy Eat World. Also remember that I said gigging, so this all needs to be done with as compact a rig as we can cook up. Likely, this comes around to one amp and multiple pedals. Switchers can cut down on the tap dancing between and during the songs, but it can be good news, bad news. Everything that's complex also has a potential to break down. So this is a balancing game. With that one amp as a platform, you'll get your different types of flavors of dirt from pedals designed to sound like other amps. And on top of that, you can add subtleties of modulation, delay, and reverb for the icing on the cake. Given the volume limitations these days, you'll also likely end up with something hovering around 20 watts, say an Origin 20 or a Fender Deluxe. I usually always take a, take a Princeton or a Deluxe, you know, or, my, or the Vibrolux, because I can throw it in my trunk if I don't have cartridge. I can take my small pedal board and right. a couple, you know, three guitars, and I'm pretty much in there, you know? Yeah, and it's pretty rare to be playing with a band that a Deluxe won't cut, you know? Right, yeah. I mean, you'll I mean like, if you're loud enough where a Deluxe isn't going to cut, then you're really loud. Yeah, you're going to be pretty loud. And these days, man, unless you're in a really big rock and roll band, Everybody in town's using small amps. Yeah, you know, I mean, that's just kind of the new, the new thing. You know? Small's the new big. Yeah, yeah. Small's, <laughs> the, small's the new big. Not that you'll actually use 20 watts, but to running at about half speed, the amp will be breathing enough to give you the big fat cleans that make a great platform for your dirt pedals. Or you could carry something bigger and use an attenuator. But the key word here is carry, and why carry more than you need? And while you're at it, if you're carrying enough PA that you're miking your amp you'll likely be just as happy with something smaller and lighter, 12 to 15 watt amp maybe. A Fender Princeton, a Blues Junior, or an AC-15 would fit right in there. It'll give you the stage volume you need, and the front of house mixer will have an easier time pulling the band sound together in the room. Now there are also single genre gigs, or even tribute cover bands, where a more singular rig will work. You're playing music that you love, and you love it because the tones and tunes in that genre resonate for you. In this role, you need to find your sound, or sounds, that'll work with your music, or at least the music of the guy standing at the microphone. Again, this has become a medium to small amp job. 
maybe a Tweed Deluxe, or even a Vox AC-10 if the guy at the microphone is holding an acoustic guitar. With the right pedals, depending on the style you're going for, those smaller amps can do this very well. And as surreal as it sounds, we are living in a time when the answer to the question of how many amps can be no amp. Quality and price, the equation that equals value, has come to the point where modern systems are within reach of the average Joe. The Fractal Audio Axe FX, the Kemper Profiler, and the Line 6 Helix are at now being used by artists both big and small. And they can make financial sense even if they take the place of an amp and shelves full of pedals. If you're thinking of going this way, you're likely already carrying a substantial PA. My friend Rhett Schull, touring musician and YouTuber, has done a great job going over this experience in using the Helix system this way. Rhett stresses that you have to build your presets from the ground up, as he did. Take the sounds in your head and find them in the software hardware to get it right. Also, the strength of the Helix is in the huge number of effects available. You can create your own presets or you can buy presets to your heart's content. And presets won't take up any more room in your spare bedroom practice space. Does it sound exactly like a tube amp breathing heavy, feeding back with the guitar? No. But is it close enough so that the bride and groom and the guy sitting at the bar and working on his third beer can't tell the difference? Yeah, it likely is. Increasingly, this is starting to look like the ultimate minimalist rig. It takes up very little room, does a huge variety of sounds, and makes us come face to face with, is it good enough? Something that most of us need practice wrestling with when it comes to these first world sort of problems anyway. Then there are the guys that play at home, which of course includes all the guys above. In fact, most of the time we're playing guitar, we're not on stage. <laughs> Here the challenge of volume to performance is even more profound. There are two ways to go really. Play your gigging amp with some pedals that can help it feel more like it does when it's playing at breathing volume. Or play a smaller amp that gives you those things at bedroom volumes. To get your 15 or 22 watt amp feeling great at home is an interesting challenge. Generally, there's two things that you're going to miss running at the amp at one and a half on the volume knob. Sustain and harmonic complexity. So the first thing we'll add is a compressor. Somewhat paradoxically perhaps because compressors are designed to squash the dynamic range. But in this use, it's mostly boosting your signal as the note starts to trail off in volume. This simulates what happens when your amp is breathing heavy, giving your notes a little additional bloom and sustain. This helps simulate not just the sound, but the feel of an amp when it's turned up louder than it can be at home. The other bit that's lacking when the amp is barely on is harmonic complexity that comes from the tubes working hard. For this, we can use a full range boost or overdrive pedal. You can go full boutique and go something like a tube driven boost like the Kingsley Page. Or you could also do this pedal with a pedal that emulates a small and cooking amp, one of the most popular being the Barefoot Honeybee. Or you can push the preamp a little harder and get some of the way there. Popular pedals for doing this are an exotic RC booster or EP booster that you see on endless Nashville pedal boards for the same reason, or a Paul Cochran Timmy for its full range push. And of course, we could also go modeler at home, maybe an HX Stomp running the same sounds as the larger Helix floor unit you use at band rehearsals. The only trick here is that you'll need something to play it through at home. Either your home studio monitors or a full range power cab will do this trick. Since the software isn't depending on feedback from the speaker and guitar, the sounds will be essentially the same at either volume. Another great way to have a responsive and inspiring home rig is, <laughs> wait for it, use a 5 watt amp. You saw that coming, right? Now, before you get a little crazy thinking, wait, here's the guy that with the tagline, the most music from the least gear, recommending I buy another amp. <laughs> What's up with that? I'm also a big fan of simplicity. Having a small amp that has the same basic sound as your big amp can greatly simplify your life. I have a practice set up away from my computer. I think it helps me concentrate better and having it set up all the time makes it easy for me to sit down and practice or just play for any 15 minutes I can find. Here, an FYD Amps Big Verb 5 watt amp is my tool of choice. It emulates the larger FYD Deluxe I might use for a gig. The small amp is breathing heavy at conversational levels at home. And it has the bloom on the notes, the edge of breakup beautiful clean sound, and if I put on a light boost, I'm practicing leads. Another combination that's very affordable is a Fender Bass Breaker 007 and Bass Breaker 15, or a VHT Special 6 and a VHT Special 20. The two amp version is one shared by amp building wizard and longtime friend Dan Lurie at FYD Amps. A shared interest in Robin Ford and Larry Carlton tones finds Dan playing a 5 watt overdrive special style amp at home and a 40 watt ODS style amp of his own design, the Session 44, at his gigs. He's even replicated his gigging pedal board in this home practice space. The things he learns from that little version of his rig on Sunday afternoons, 
he then takes to his full-size gigging setup. So how many amps do you need? If you're a gigging player or an at-home player, you can get it done with two, one, or even none these days. We live in the glory time of gear, so much availability at such accessible prices. The real challenge isn't getting your rig together, it's getting your chops and the band together. And that's the subject of future videos. If you like the video, hit the like button. And if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and hit that too. Until next time, thanks for being part of the 5 Watt world. Thank you.